Our next presenter is Carly Bates from Iowa State University. Hello, everybody. My name is Carly Bates. I am currently a second year at the Iowa State um, College of Veterinary Medicine, and this is my presentation on the future of wean pig sampling, why not rope knot. So currently herds are tested for porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome virus as a surveillance method or to monitor the elimination status of a herd to know when new breeding stock can be brought in. Um, currently for PERS detection, serum is the gold standard, but unfortunately this is not a true population sample just due to the time that it takes to collect the sample, the labor that it takes to collect the sample, along with the cost of the submissions. Um, otter wipes, they're not, they're not widely used and there's limited practical application. Oral fluids are used post weaning and they were an absolute game changer for the industry. Um, they're used frequently just um, as of use and cost of the su submission of samples. So what can we do that is a true population sample that is easy to implement, that is cost effective, but also sensitive, en sensitive enough to pick up PERS virus? Our idea, the rope knot. So the objective of this study was to evaluate a more efficient and effective surveillance method used to detect PERS in due to wean pigs by comparing rope knots to current common practices, which we used udder wipes and serum samples. So you're probably asking, what is a rope knot? A rope knot is a 15 inch piece of non-bleached rope that has been tied in the center three times to then create a rope that is approximately six inches in length with a knot in the center that is about three-fourths inches thick. This is then placed at the back of the crate under the heat lamp for approximately an hour and a half. So to the method of the rope knot and how we implemented them at the South Farm. So like I said previously, each rope knot was placed in the crate for approximately an hour and a half. And then after an hour and a half or complete saturation, each rope was picked up, placed in an individual bag designated for that crate the contents of that rope was then squeezed out to get one milliliter um, of fluid for an individual sample. And if we could not get one milliliter of fluid, we then added 10 milliliters of PBS to um, saturate the rope in order to get an individual sample. From then, all 15 of the individual samples that we had, the rope knot and the fluid, were then placed into a large bag. And the contents of this bag was then mixed and put in a large tube for pooled testing. For the udder wipes, a 4x4 gauze pad was soaked in 8, millilit 8 milliliters of PBS and rubbed along the underline of a sow for approximately 15 seconds. Um, each sample was then collected and the gauze pad was placed in an individual bag. One milliliter of fluid from the individual bag was put in a tube for individual testing, while the remaining liquid gauze pad from all 15 of the samples were placed in a larger bag and put in a tube for pooled testing. So these are just some examples of um, the udder wipes being used. This is one with the sow laying down and with the sow standing up, so kind of varied on the position that the sow was in. And then the method of the serum samples, we had five piglets per litter that was used, and each of the serum samples were pooled by litter for testing. So just some observations that I made on farm while this trial was taking place. Um, in some of the crates, the sow did get a hold of the rope knot. This would make for more of a family oral fluid as opposed to a piglet oral fluid. The, kite, or the site was currently in the midst of a PERS outbreak, which may have made the pigs um, more lethargic and less active, um, so may not have been enticed to the rope as much. There is less human error when you compare the rope knots to the udder wipes. Just place the rope, walk away, and come back when either fully saturated or when a certain amount of time has been allotted. The udder wipes were more labor intensive. They involved um, oftentimes getting in the crates and getting the sow up. The rope knots did take significantly less physical time than bleeding and there is no need to have trained individuals. And then this is also rope knots are more of a welfare friendly um, sample type as compared to serum samples with not having to pick up pigs and cause a stressful event for that pig. This is just a video observation of a pig chewing on the rope knot. This was pretty typical of what, what I saw. Um, throughout all the crates that had the rope knots. Um, so can you guys spot the rope knots? These are just some places that we found in the crates that we ended up finding the rope knot. Um, as you can see, this one was one that did get caught by the sow and it was found in the feeder. 
Um, just more observations. At first, the piglets were a little uneasy about the rope knots, but after a while, they really warmed up and began moving them all around the crates and uh, playing with them and chewing on them and, I guess, having fun with them. Um, so these are just two examples of rope knots um, of what they would look like coming out of the crates after an hour and a half of being placed. This one is pretty dry, not much saturation. So this is one that we would have added 10 milliliters of PBS2 in order to get the sample. And then this one was pretty saturated. It was one that we were able to squeeze out and get one milliliter of a sample without having to use PBS. Um, so why not rope knot? It works. Um, rope knots and serum samples agreed on all 15 of the samples, whereas udder wipes um, only agreed to serum samples on 13 of the 15 samples. And the use of PBS to dilute the ropes um, still resulted in the same positive and negative results as the current gold standard, which is serum samples. So this chart shows all of the positive negative results from all three of the sample types taken. And highlighted in green here, you can see 15 of the 15 samples between oral fru fluids and serum samples agreed on a positive negative scale. And then as opposed to only 13 of the 15 samples agreed between auto wipes and serum samples, which this can potentially indicate that rope knot fluids are a better um, sample test than other wipes, just having more correlation to the serum samples. So this chart now maps all of the individual CT values from all of the individual um, samples taken. In red, we have other wipes, gray is rope knots, and yellow is serum samples. So as you can see, a positive serum sample CT value was um, lower when compared to udder wipes and rope knots. This is just something to take into consideration when considering a testing method. But when comparing the individual versus the pooled samples, there was a higher sensitivity in the pooled samples than the average of the individual samples. So in this chart, the, oops, the gray is pooled and the red is the average of the individual samples. So for rope knots, the pooled had a CT value of 30.3, whereas the average of the individual samples was 32.5. So pooled samples did have a higher sensitivity than the average of the individuals. Um, so just some changes to consider that I had found may work better, may not work better, depending on how things are going. Um, potentially find a way to keep the rope knot away from the sow. Again, this um, would depend if your sample type is a family oral fluid or just a piglet oral fluid. Um, the rope knot design, there's definitely some variations that people could throw at it. Potentially, it could have been a little bigger to entice the pigs more, um, but not too big that it would have diluted any of the samples out. And then another um, potential task that could have been done is we could have soaked the PBS or soak the rope knots in PBS before placing them in the crates. Um, this might be a better option for some people, um, just depending on how their system works. And then just to some discussion points to throw out and toss around. Pooling versus individual sample samples could um, differ in the results that you expect to find. If you have a high prevalence, you may want to consider pooled. Um, if you have a low prevalence expected, then you may want to consider um, individual testing, just kind of depending on where the farm is at um, the time of testing. And then older pigs more ha may have chewed on the rope knots more. These pigs were not set to wean for another week. So that's just something to evaluate on um, if older pigs would have been more enticed for the rope knots. And then cost, um, pooled samples will result in lower cost of submissions as compared to serum samples. And again, the site was currently in a PERS outbreak, so pigs were more lethargic and less active than when this, when this sample would typically be taken. Um, as a final conclusion, um, when, a, when a site is in closure and you're not able to step in and out of each crate, this is a really great option as it limits the cross-contamination bet between the crates. The next step of this trial would, to, would be to repeat on a low prevalence expected farm to test the sensitivity of the rope knots. Rope knots are a true population sample as compared to the current gold standard of serum samples. The rope knots took significantly less physical time than bleeding and you do not need trained individuals. They were very simple. We walked around, put them in all the crates, came back an hour and a half later or when we saw majority of them were saturated. 
and pick them up. And then again, rope knots are more welfare friendly compared to serum samples, not having to cause a stress event for both the pigs and the sow. Um, big thank you to Dr. Brandy Burton, um, Dr. Amanda Reaver, and Dr. Matt Finch with the team at Suaday, um, Dr. Jeff Akonos at Farmgate, and the SFIP team at Iowa State University. I will now open the floor to any questions that anyone may have. Thank you, Carly. Any questions? Hi, great presentation. Thank you. Um, I was just curious, do you know how many times you had to add PBS to those rope samples? Right, so the question was how many times we needed to add um, PBS to the rope knot samples. I do believe out of the 15 samples, nine of them did need PBS added, just in order to get a mill for the individual sample. Uh, thank you, that's a great presentation. I'm also from Iowa State University. Uh, my question is that what do you think of the difference between the rope knot and uh, the family oral fluid? I don't right. think so the question being, what, what, what are my thoughts on the difference of yeah, the... What are the main advantages of a road, road knot compared to family oral fluid? Right, so the question being um, the advantage of a piglet oral fluid as compared to a family oral fluid if the sow did get a hold of the rope knot. Um, I guess the advantages would just be being able to pick it up in the piglets as compared to the sows if uh, the, the sow may have, um, she just may affect your results. Um, when you just want to get a piglet oral fluid as opposed to a family oral fluid. So. Um, you mentioned that um, you, you would like to measure this in a low prevalence setting. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about how this method will compare to processing fluids? Like right, and processing fluids would be for younger groups of pigs that aren't set to wean um, as soon. So I guess comparing it to processing fluids, um, it would be very similar. It's just something easier to implement in older pigs that are due to wean um, sooner or later. So. Thank you for your presentation. Just wanted to ask if, were you concerned about the rope nuts being urinated upon by the sow or the, the ropes being contaminated by the pit water. Right, so if, if we were concerned about the contamination of, um, that was not necessarily a concern because um, our assumption was if the pigs had, been, had moved it, it had been touched by the pigs and hopefully the test would be sensitive enough to pick up the virus on the rope knot even if it did have contamination of um, urine or water. speculation on the difference is in results between the udder wipes and the rope knot from what you saw. Um, would that be in terms of like using them or? With the results you had uh, more positive correlation with the rope knot versus the udder wipe. Right. Any speculation of why you saw that observation? Um, um, not really. I don't know if it um, potentially could have been human error, you know, not wiping the, the underline enough or well enough or any things like that, that would be um, my hypothesis is that it may, may have been human error, but um, I guess that would be something that definitely could use further testing. All right. Thank you very much, Carly.